everybody. Welcome to Finding Love, a podcast about dating and love in midlife. I'm Nancy Bruce. Let's jump right into this. Today, I want to talk about what I like to call a repeatable dating plan. So last week, we talked about getting ready to receive love. And we are here we are at the start of a new year. And so I want us to get all our ducks in a row as we embark on 2024. And one of the things I want you to think about is having a repeatable dating plan so that dating in midlife does not start to feel overwhelming or underwhelming. You don't burn out. You don't throw in the towel and say, this isn't for me. Um, a repeatable dating plan is a great way to have a, a sort of a guideline for yourself. It's like a set of parameters. Here's how I am going to operate. That's what you're telling yourself. And here's how this is going to work for me. You know, I, I'm a big believer in mindset and we talk a lot about mindset, but if I thought that I had to just mindset myself way, uh, my way into finding love, that would make me really stressed out. I mean, I would have to, like, like, what does that mean? I have to reach, you know, Buddha levels of intensity and focus before I will find true love. I mean, that, that feels really intense. And so I think it's a combination of mindset and planning and action. Those three components are what are going to propel you down the path of finding love. And you can't just have one and not the other two. You can't only have mindset, right? You're not going to, you're not going to sit and meditate your way into, into true love. At a certain point, you have to get off the couch. You have to go on some dates and you can't just have action because you want to plan. You want to have what I, again, what I call a repeatable dating plan so that you don't burn out um, too quickly before you really do find what you're looking for. So for me, a repeatable dating plan has three components and I'm going to talk about each one. and you know, listen, have some fun with this. This is, I I don't want you to take this really, really seriously. You can come up with your own repeatable dating plan, but these, this is what really did work for me. So the first thing was a dating uniform. Now I am a big believer that what you wear is an expression of yourself for sure. It is your way of saying to the world, here I am. You can take your place and take up space in the world very boldly with whatever you wear. And I love that. Sometimes you just like to wear things that are comfortable. And I don't think that, you know, wearing black means you want to necessarily fade into the scenery. I think that wearing black or subdued colors are just a way of being comfortable. And also black is very chic. But I also believe that when you have a dating uniform that you can count on, that you know what you're going to wear for all these dates, it makes the getting ready part so easy. Because while clothes are definitely an expression of you, sometimes just choosing what you are trying to express can be overwhelming in itself. You know that feeling when you walk into your closet and you're like, oh my God, what, what am I going to wear? What do I want to wear today? And so it's, it's, it's enough on a just a daily basis. Sometimes I have that feeling when I'm just getting ready for the day, let alone getting ready for a date where the stakes are a lot higher. So do yourself a favor. And, and like I always like to say, let's stack the decks in your favor. Do yourself a favor and have a part of your closet set aside, you know, a, however many inches on your on your rack set aside for these are my dating outfits. It doesn't have to be just one. It could be a few, but it's great to have like interchangeable things. And what you want are items that feel familiar, that feel flattering, and that also feel comfortable. Now, I'm not trying to say wear sensible shoes. I mean, you do, you do want to have a little va va voom on these dates. Let's let's be serious, but definitely don't wear super high heels if you can't walk steadily in them. If you're like going to topple over, like I am, just not a person who could ever wear stiletto heels. Number one, I would probably be like six eight in stiletto, stiletto heels, but also I you know, I'm not comfortable walking in them at all. But I have some really cool boots that I love to wear when I'm getting dressed up or when I'm going out. Like, and they just make me feel cool. They're like very badass boots and I can walk in them and they're comfortable and I can wear them for hours and hours and hours. So choose items from top to bottom, start with your shoes and all the way up, items that you really like that feel flattering and that, you know, you could wear comfortably. And I think I gave you this tip on an earlier podcast, but this is a really important one. If you're planning on meeting 
a person at a bar and sitting on a bar stool, definitely wear something that covers you all the way in back because there's nothing worse than feeling like you have to fidget around on a bar stool and pull your shirt down to, you know, make sure your butt's not showing, you know, and all of those little things, you, you don't want those distractions. You don't want to be self-conscious. Remember, this is not like meeting your girlfriends out for a drink. You are meeting somebody who might be a potential love interest, but at the onset is a complete stranger. So you don't want a lot of distractions with your outfit. So if you're anything like me, this was this is a this is a big one because I can very easily get distracted by clothes. Very easily. If I'm wearing something that I don't really like, that I don't feel really good in, it almost ruins my good time. It almost ruins my evening. I mean, I can count uh, the number of times in my life where I wore something that I didn't like, and it sort of overshadowed the experience. So pick a few things that you really do like, that you feel your best in. You're, you're going to be presenting your best version of yourself. Yourself, And listen, a lot of people will say, wear color because men are attracted to color, you know, which I think is such a hilarious, I mean, are, okay, men are attracted to color. It's not like they're wild animals, like they're people, you know, like men also are, are accustomed to seeing women wearing black and neutral colors. I mean, they're not going to be shocked or bored or, or somehow miss you in the crowd. I can't see you because you're not wearing red. Um, you know, wear what you want to wear that feels good to you. You don't have to wear color. You can wear a pop of color on your lips maybe instead of wearing, you know, a colorful shirt or a colorful blouse. So wear what feels good to you and have it ready in your closet. I really cannot repeat this enough because because when you do start dating, when you get, get your dating plan underway, you're going to have probably more than one day a week. And you don't want to approach your closet and approach the getting ready time period as if it's this huge chore, as if it's such a bummer. Oh, I don't want to get ready for this date. I mean, you know, we've all been there. I mean, e almost every single plan I ever make, I regret it the minute I have to actually get ready for it. I'm like, why? Why can't I just stay home? So you don't want that mindset because that energy, you're going to be carrying it with you out the door. That energy of this is a chore. I don't want to do it. It's a bummer. You're going to carry it with you to your date. So you don't want that. So have an outfit at the ready, shoes and everything, have it ready to go. And, you know, for that matter, since we're talking about this, have your hair and makeup story ready to go too. I, you know, don't try a brand new hairstyle like, oh, I'm meeting someone at the corner bar. I think I'll try an updo for the first time in 10 years. No, don't do that. Just wear your hair the way you like to wear it. Wear the makeup that you like to wear. Don't go overboard in any one way. Just be yourself, but the shiny version of yourself and have everything ready for you to go so that when the date rolls around, you can get ready in under an hour and you can feel peppy and you can feel like, okay, that was fun and easy. Here I go. Number two for your repeatable dating plan is have some places chosen in your neighborhood or close to your house that you like, that you feel comfortable going to, you know, bars, restaurants, uh, meeting places, coffee houses, wherever you would like to meet someone, have a few of those places chosen. I would say don't go to the same place every single time. I made that mistake in Seattle. Oh my gosh, there was this little restaurant around the corner from where I lived, not Mama Molina, not where I met David, but another restaurant. I can't remember the name of it. It's not there anymore. And they had a really cool bar area to the restaurant and a very cool bartender, this woman who I thought was really fun and I liked her. So I felt good. I felt comfortable there. But I made the mistake of going there too many times on first dates when I was, you know, trying to meet someone. I was going on hinge dates. And after about the third or fourth time, she would give me these little like knowing glances and like a wink at me. And I'm like, no, you know, don't do that. Because then I felt like, uh, first of all, the guy's going to know that I'm like a regular here. And this is where I bring all my quote unquote dates, which somehow felt really embarrassing. But then also I, I just got self-conscious, right? I felt like, oh God, I've got to mix this up. I can't always be bringing a different guy in here. And this woman was like, you know, I, she felt like we had a private joke between us and I didn't really want a private joke with the bartender. That really was not my goal. Um, so, so mix it up and have, you know, bar, restaurant, coffee shop, 
have a few different kinds of places. I don't think it has to be a bar every single time. And places, again, that you feel comfortable going to, places where it feels like, you know, you're, it's not, it's not too loud or it's not, you know, if you're not a, a, a super, super social person, it doesn't feel like a really hip crowd, a, a place where you're, you, know, you don't feel like comfortable in your own skin. Um, there are, you know, lots of places that I would not go to on a first date. And, um, and maybe I'll do a whole other podcast about that, but, but pick some, pick some places where you, that, that you like that are easy for you to get to. Also, I would say, do not start getting into the habit of driving yourself an hour away from where you live for a first meeting or even a second meeting, you know, in the beginning, he can come to you. And that may seem dated, and that's just how I feel about it. He can drive to you. Any man worth his salt is going to get in his car and drive to meet you, okay? And I, I don't want you to get into the habit of feeling like you've got to drive across town or drive for 45 minutes or an hour, and, and there's no need for that. You know, he can he can drive to you, and if it's close to you and convenient for you, that is the name of the game. And again, it's going to prevent you from burning out too fast on this whole dating experience, because you know you gotta you've got to play the long game here. You've got to pace yourself. You've got to realize that it's, you're going to have to meet a bunch of people, and so if you burn out too fast, you're really self sabotaging. So let's figure out a plan that works for you. And that brings me to my third point of a repeatable dating plan, which is time frame, right? So there are two parts to this. So first of all, time frame in the sense of how many days a week do you really want to go on dates? Think about it, right? It's probably not Monday through Saturday. That's probably too much. You probably don't want to go out and meet new people every single night of the week and give yourself only one or two days of rest. I mean, if you're anything like me, I would flip it. And it, I would go out maybe twice a week and give myself five days off because first of all, you've got a life, you've got other people in your life, you've got people to see, you've got, you know, uh, friends and children, and coworkers, people that you want to see. And you also want alone time, right? Especially if you're in the middle of life. And again, I'll use myself as an example. I like alone time. I like downtime. I need downtime to regroup and recharge I like to curl up with a book and not be disturbed for several hours. I like to curl up with a show and not be disturbed. I like to go on walks. I like to do errands by myself. Like I, I like alone time and I'm sure you do too. So don't over schedule yourself because what happens is that you almost start resenting the dating process for getting in the way of your life. I'm laughing because I just remembered something that a friend of mine said to me recently. She said, because she was seeing, she met a guy online and they were seeing each other for about, I don't know, about two months. And it wasn't, it wasn't the right match. It wasn't, it wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, and I think she realized that pretty early on, but she wanted to give it some space to see, you know, maybe who knows, I might be wrong. But she said to me once, um, my God, this, this dating is really getting in the way of me spending time alone. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Yeah, dating gets in the way of you spending time alone. So do yourself a favor and do not overschedule yourself. So think about it. When you think about time frame, think, okay, realistically, I want to go out and meet someone, new people, call it three times a week. And maybe that's a couple of weekdays and one weekend. You want to preserve the, you know, open yourself up to the fact that on, re on repeat dates, you know, on the second, third, fourth date with a person, he probably is want to, going to want to see you on a Friday or Saturday night. So figure, okay, great. I will date on a weekend and I'll date a couple of people on weekdays. And I'm going to do that for, you know, the next eight months and we'll see how, we'll see what happens. Let the, let the, let the chips land as they will. But I'm going to be open to seeing people, to meeting people X amount of days a week. And don't exceed those days. You know, don't break your own rule. Anybody who is is worth it will wait for you. If you say, yeah, my week's really busy, I can see you next week, or I can see you in a couple of weeks, we can meet, you know, two weeks down the road, that person will wait if if he's he's worth meeting. So keep that in mind. And then the other part of time frame is think about how long you want to spend on each individual date. 
So when you go on a date, say you're meeting someone for coffee or you're meeting someone for a drink at six o'clock, you know, you don't want to be sitting on that bar stool for three hours. That is not what that first date is all about. You want to leave while the energy is still high. You want to, you know, that expression, leave them wanting more. Um, You want to leave when things are great, the conversation is flowing, everything feels good. An hour, an hour and a half in, you say, wow, this has been really fun. I got to go, but I'd love to see you again. And then there can always be a second date. You don't have to fit every single thing into the first date. Not every conversation has to happen at that first meeting. So leave some things, save some things for the second date, for the third date. And, and, and that's why this is the, this part of the time frame discussion is so important because I, I have this habit of when I'm in a conversation that I like, I just, I, listen, I can talk for hours, but also I have a bit of a people pleaser vibe sometimes when I meet someone new and I don't want to appear rude and I don't want to leave too early. And, oh, is, is he going to, is, are his feelings going to be hurt if I leave now? So I really had to have a conversation with myself about that when I when I created my own repeatable dating plan and I had a rule that first dates, first meetings were only an hour, an hour and a half at the most. And, you know, things can wait to the second date. The next conversation can wait to the second date. And it gives you the 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 sort of the mental setup to approach a date in a way that feels healthy and good for you, which is, hey, I'm not going to be here all night. You know, yeah, I'm going to meet someone for a drink at six. I'll be done by seven. I'll be done by 7.15. You know, and so it doesn't feel like you're overextending yourself and you're so committed to a whole evening with a brand new person because that can feel very daunting. I know a lot of people, a few friends of mine who they don't want to date. They they are really resistant to dating in the middle of life because they I think they're nervous about what those first dates are all about. I think they're nervous about, you know, having to sit across from someone that you don't know for hours and hours and try desperately to make small talk. And it's like, yeah, if that's what you think a first date is, that does sound terrible. That sounds grim. You know, who would want to do that? So flip that in your mind and and have a different parameter set up in your own imagination of what this date is going to look like. I'm going to sit down. We're going to we're going to talk with each other and get to know each other for about an hour. We're going to maybe have a drink or a cup of coffee and we're going to exchange, you know, some stories. We're going to tell each other you know, this is, this is me. Hey, share my stories that you share your stories with me. And then that's going to be the end of it. And then if we want to see each other again, we can always do that. So that's, that's the mindset to have about those first meetings. And time frame is the key to that. I have found, I love a guide. You know, I love a practical set of guidelines because when I have a practical set of guidelines, I feel in control of the situation. I don't feel like I'm just sort of wandering around and, you know, at the whim of other people and come what may, okay, I guess I'll sort of try to survive this date. You know, it's, it's, it's terrible and boring and my eyes are glazing over, but I have to sit here. No, you don't. You can always leave. And, and that, that's another caveat to this. You can leave if You've set set this up in your head of, you know, okay, fine. I'm going to stay for an hour. I'm going to stay for an hour, 20 minutes. We're going to get to know each other. We're going to share some stories and we're going to see if there's a spark of interest. We're just going to see, which of course you have to do. You have to meet people in real life. No matter how many text messages you exchange or Zoom calls you have, you have to meet people in real life to see if there's actually a connection. But if there is not a connection and if in fact this person is making you uncomfortable in any way, whether by what he's saying or what he's doing, his body language, you know, his his gestures toward you, anything at all, you can and should leave that date. You can leave after 10 minutes if you want to. I had to once leave a date after about 15 minutes of sitting there because the conversation made me so uncomfortable and it wasn't anything super overt. It was just a weird vibe that I got, a very unsettling feeling. This man was super morose and he was telling me tragic stories about his family. I mean, truly tragic, but the kind of things that you would tell a therapist or a best soulmate friend, not the kind of things you would tell a woman who you had just met 10 minutes ago. So the, the weirdness of it, the, you know, the, the oversharing 
of really sad, upsetting, almost trauma-filled stories. I, I, you know, I, I remember this very vividly. We were in a coffee shop in Seattle, and I put both of my hands on the table, and I said, "You know what? I have to go. I am gonna, I'm gonna call it. The state is over. I really wish you all the best with all of the things you're dealing with, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave now." And I'm really glad I did it. I was so relieved when I walked out of that of that coffee shop and walked to my car because there's no way I could have pinned myself to that chair for another 45 minutes to listen to more tales of woe from this man who is a complete stranger. So you have your parameter set up, you know, but also definitely feel comfortable and clear about the fact that you can leave any situation way earlier than you thought than you intended if it's not the right situation for you. So repeatable dating, dating plan. This is this is what I, I I really encourage you to think about. And you know, open a journal and jot some ideas down about how your dating plan would go and what other elements of a repeating repeatable dating plan would work for you. But definitely dating uniform, places in your area that in your neighborhood that you feel comfortable going to that are close and easy for you to get to and time frame. How much time are you going to really commit to dating? And and remember, dating in the middle of life is is uh, it's going to be a big change for you if you haven't been in the dating game in a long time or even if you have, even if you have been dating for years and years and you're in the middle of life, Take a fresh look at this. Take a look at, you know, how can I how can I start this new year off with a, a, a different plan, a different approach to dating, and a different approach to finding love? What are some things that maybe haven't worked for me in the past? Let's be honest. What are some things that I really don't like about dating? How can I change it up so that it works for me, so that I can continue to do this until I do find love and continue to do it and have fun with it. You know, be playful with it, have fun, enjoy it. If you're not enjoying yourself, you're going to bring that energy of this is a big, huge drag onto your dates. And people can pick up on that. And even if they don't pick up on it, you know, overtly, even if they don't pick up on it and tell you they're, tell you they're picking up on it, believe me, that energy definitely makes its way across the table and people can feel it. And nobody wants that, right? Nobody wants to date someone who is not into it, who feels like, oh, this is a chore and I don't really enjoy this experience. Nobody wants that. So set yourself up for success. Repeatable dating plans are one way to do it. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about too, because I think it's fun because I do love a plan. I do. I love a plan. I love a guide. So uh, I can't wait to talk to you again next week because I've got some really fun ideas for a podcast for the next, for the coming up months. And I'm excited. There's so many things I want to, I want to tell you about and so many things that I want to chat about. And I also want to encourage you if you have any topics that you'd like me to talk about or questions or recent dating stories that you'd like to unpack, let's, let's do it. So write to me at hello at findinglove.co. Send me an email and I will absolutely read those emails and talk about whatever you want to talk about. I'm excited to do it. Okay, everybody. Until next time. See ya.